Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Steven and I'm a future first year dental student who will start studying dentistry next year at the University of Tennessee Health Science Center in Memphis. Welcome to a new series. This is something totally new for me. This will be a tutorial on something that's very important and that is a, a section of the DAT, cube counting, which is in the perceptual ability section. And this is gonna be part one of this three part series. So if you're checking it out, this video will be an introduction to cube counting, what it is, how you begin to approach it, and we will go to part two next time and then part three. And by the end of it, I think that you will be able to absolutely kill this section. Just to quickly establish my credibility in this discussion, I actually got a 23 on the perceptual ability test on the DAT, which is not amazing, it's not perfect, but it was pretty solid and it definitely helped me get into dental school. So without any further wait, we'll get right into it. And today we're gonna to be using the iPad Pro to do this tutorial and to talk about this topic. Cool, so everything that I'm doing here, you'll be able to see and hopefully it's all very visible and useful for you. This is um, my homepage for the Mastering DAT Cube Counting series. As you can see, some beautiful drawings by yours truly. And yeah, we'll go right right ahead and get into it. So, so here is our homepage. This is where we will begin. And I wanna start by just introducing cube counting and what exactly this is asking you. So first off, cube counting is one of the six parts of the perceptual ability test. And in my opinion, it's actually probably one of the easier parts, but that's why I wanted to go ahead and begin with this subject because I think it's very doable. We're gonna start here. We have the introduction and basically this is our cube, right? We have this right here and it has six sides. Every cube has six sides. So here we have our front side, our left side, our back side, which is not visible to us. And that's going to be one that they try to trick us a lot on. The right side, which is also not visible, at least in this orientation, this cube can be flipped the other way, and so the, the right and left sides can be interchangeable. The top side, and our sixth side is the bottom. Now, the bottom side is in gray here for an important reason. The bottom is never gonna be counted, so I'll get to that later, but that's why it's in gray here, because that's sort of important. Okay, so now I wanna introduce you to this idea of a bucket of paint. So, we have this bucket of paint here. We've got this beautiful blue paint. And let's imagine that we took this bucket of paint and we poured it on top of the cube. So here's our, pa our paint. It's being poured on top of our lovely white cube. What we're gonna get is we're gonna get a blue cube now. So after the paint's poured, we actually have five sides painted. Now there's a reason for that. If the paint was poured on top of this cube, it would cover the top, the back, both sides left and right, and then this front side. But because the bottom of the cube is actually on the ground or on the theoretical ground, it's not gonna get painted. So if this cube were sitting freely on the ground and a bucket of paint were poured on top of it, only five sides would be painted. Once again, top, left, right, front, and back. Wonderful, so now we have the basic idea of what this section is trying to ask us. And how exactly do they phrase it? Well, this is gonna be what you see on the DAT itself, the question that's how many cubes have blank sides painted? Um, and then this, so this right here is going to be a number that they're asking you. And it's basically just asking how many cubes have just this specific number painted. And once we get to the, f the full examples, I will show you how this works. But let's go ahead and get into some very, very basic, low-level examples to get you started with this topic. And these examples aren't going to be exactly how they're asked. What I just showed you was the actual question. In these examples, we will just count the number of sides and get used to counting sides in general. So this first example is super easy. It's what we just worked on. We're just gonna count the number of sides that would be painted if a theoretical bucket of paint were to drop onto this cube. As you can see here, we're gonna start with our first side, which is our front side. We will see a second side here, two, three we can see there. So those are our three visible sides. But the importance of the perceptual ability test is to be able to see things that aren't immediately visible to you, but do exist. So in reality, what we have here is our back side back here, which is four, and our right side here, which is five. And remember, the bottom of this cube, which I can sort of quickly represent like this, this bottom side is not gonna be painted. 
So the sixth side of the cube here does not get painted, so we don't have a six. So the answer to this very simple question is that we have five sides painted. Moving on to another question. In this one, we have two cubes and they're sort of butted up against each other. And what this does is that when two cubes are together like this, the side that is in between them is not gonna be painted, of course, because it's not accessible to the bucket of paint that's falling on it. So we'll go ahead and start counting. Here we have one, two, three. Our back side here, which is four, and then moving over to this cube, this way, we have five, six, back side seven, and this right side eight. So the number of sides that are painted in this structure is eight sides. Cool, moving on again. We have three cubes with two faces being attached and so therefore not visible. We'll get right into it. We have one, two, three, four, five, backside six, then we have this side visible, which is seven. We have our front side here being eight, our top nine, back here 10, and right side 11. So this structure would have 11 sides painted. Another example, three cubes, very similar. We're going to go ahead, right, get right into it. We've got one, two, three, backside four, front side five, right six. The back side of this bottom cube, which is sort of hard to represent in a drawing, but the back side of that bottom cube is gonna be seven. And so to quickly draw that out so that you could see it, it would look like this. Boy, this is kind of hard to draw. So this side right here, this back side, that's our seventh side. Back to counting, we have eight, nine, 10 on the top, 11 on this back side, and 12 on this right side. So the answer here is 12. Now quickly, once again, you're not gonna be counting these sides in this exact manner on the DAT, but I like these examples because they get you used to actually counting sides and making sure that you can do this. Our final example for part one is this one. So we have four cubes here. Now this is an important example because this is the first time that we have a cube that is entirely invisible to us. And that cube is below this cube right here. So it actually is sort of below in this area down here and would look sort of something like this. We'll once again, get right into the counting. One, two, three, four, five, backside six, seven, eight, right side nine. And now we're gonna count the cube that's not entirely visible right side 10 and back side 11. So we have two sides that would be visible if we were looking at this cube from the back. And then we have front side 12, 13, 14, back side 15, right side 16. So our answer here for this last example is 16. Now, these are, like I said, some fun examples to get you started with the process of cube counting. This isn't exactly how you're gonna do it, but that's just sort of a good way to begin counting sides and to understand this process of painting and how it works and basically what the questions are asking. In part two, next time, we'll get into some actual DAT examples of how cube counting works. And I promise you, if you go through these parts, you will do very, very well in this section of the perceptual ability test. The best way to master perceptual ability is to continually practice. And if you can do practice problems every day before you take the DAT, I promise you, you're gonna do very, very well on the perceptual ability test. Unlike some of the biology and chemistry sections of the DAT, this section is purely practice and it's something that you can improve on with time. So yeah, stay tuned for part two. It's gonna be coming out very shortly and I promise you, you're gonna kill it on the perceptual ability test. Guys, as I said in the beginning, my name is Steven. I am a future first year dental student and this is my YouTube channel. If you're interested in similar content on the DAT, on studying, on technology, anything in this sort of realm of pre-dental, you're gonna enjoy the channel. So go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button and joining me for more content in the future. Also, if you liked the video and you think it helped you out, leave me a comment and drop a like on the video. These are good ways to show me that you guys are out there watching and appreciating the content and it'll help me make more things in the future. So thanks guys. And once again, stay tuned for part two. It's coming shortly. Good luck studying.